If you suffer from any of the following, heart condition, nervous disposition, low self-esteem, a general inability to tell fact from fiction, then we ask that you kindly consider leaving the auditorium. Now, we'll give you a minute or two to think about that. We have to contractually. Kerry, can you give me a signal when it meets up, please? If you do decide to leave, don't worry, because no one's going to look at you. That's why. Right. <laughs> if you go, just go. There's no shame in it. Take Luke here, for example. He kept running out of the tech rehearsal the whole time. Is that right, Luke? Well, on a couple of occasions. On a couple of occasions. Once or twice. Come on, a few more than that. I wouldn't say that. You shit yourself. <laughs> Look, it's bloody scary, all right? People eating ghosts. Look, just leave it. A little bit cold in here all of a sudden, a little bit drafty suddenly. Right, that's it, I'm going. Right, leave it. Luke, come back, ignore him. Sorry. So, anybody? Now, I bet you're all wondering, who's going to be playing Mr. Sherlock Holmes? The esteemed rat actor, Mr. Ryan Caston. Thank you. Hey, and turning in the part of Sir Henry Baskerville, the eminent actor, Mr. Luke Bailey. And playing the part of 
Dr. Watson. The lead? Not the lead. The protagonist! <laughs> no. It's the Michael Gentry! <laughs> Members of the car. Oh, oh, that'll be the signal and carry on. Uh, maybe it's a good opportunity, though, to uh, go over where we've got up to, Lou. Perhaps you could, yeah? Yeah, good idea, Dan. Yeah. Okay, so, I am Sir Charles, squire of Baskerville Hall, Darmore. Well, I was Sir Charles. Now Sir Charles is dead. Was dead? I'm not dead. You're dying now, though. Get <laughs> on with it. <laughs> Sir Charles appeared to have died from what would appear to be a massive heart attack to his, well, his heart. <laughs> and then Darren came on with the announcement. <laughs> Sorry, old chef. Quite all right, not your fault. Yeah. Management, eh? Yeah. But the mystery still remains. What did cause this man's heart attack to his heart? Was it indeed some demon hound from hell? Were well, the dark forces of evil and world, eh? <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, prepare ye now for the hand <laughs> of the basketball. <laughs> I can safely assume that this. Walking stick? Never assume anything, Watson. I have no reason to doubt that this walking stick... Sir, it's a walking stick, is it? Well, I think I can recognise a walking stick. Can you? Can't I? That's for you to decide. <laughs> Maybe I was a little bit hasty. What the devil is it, then? <laughs> of course it's a walking stick, Watson. Now, based on your observations, what can you tell me about its owner? Well, obviously he had a hand. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't know, I'm useless. I'm off to the club. Watson, come back here. You're not useless. Maybe that you are not yourself luminous, my friend, but you are a conductor of light. A light that shines upon me and <laughs> illuminates me. <laughs> like a torch. Yes, pretty much like a torch, Watson, but not any old torch. Nor my torch. My own special torch. I don't know what to say. You don't have to say anything. Just turn yourself on and keep yourself turned on whenever you're around me. <laughs> hey! Maybe I should knock yourself a couple of cheap little cheap. No time, Watson. We have a new case on our hands. Did you hear that knocking? <laughs> yes! Now, what can you deduce from that knocking? You know my methods? Supply them. It's coming from the door! Elementary! What else? <laughs> Sounds urgent. Yes, and think, what is it they want us to do? Open the door! Exactly. <laughs> Whoever it is, is frantic to come in. <laughs> well, open the door. <laughs> Here now, the legend of the hound. Good day, sir. Perhaps you'd like your stick back. Ah, my walking stick. How did you know? A stick can reveal a whole existence, Dr. Mortimer. You're in London only a few days, I presume. But, but tell the... Watson, close your mouth. <laughs> How did you... I am Sherlock Holmes, the greatest detective of all time. Ah, well, I actually believed you to be the second. The second? Mm. Well, some would say the third. But I say your capture of the infamous Slasher Selden secures second place behind, of course, Monsoir Bertie Long, the genius of Grenoble. Huh? <laughs> and I can deduce from the look on your face that I have male insulting faux pas. You'll be kind enough to leave the deducing to moi. Now, you didn't come here today merely to be reacquainted with your stick, did you, Doctor? No, sir. No, sir. I came here, sir, because I am confronted by a most serious and extraordinary problem. And recognising as I do that you are the second highest expert in Europe. In your opinion? No, in Europe. <laughs> the business. Precisely. Indeed, get on with it. I would like, with your permission, Mr. Holmes, to tell you a story. If you must. <laughs> Here now, the legend of the hat. In the year of the Great Rebellion, Baskerville Hall was held by Sir Hugo, a 
fame. God was man. One night, he kidnapped a fair maiden and locked her in an upper chamber of Baskerville Hall, intending to have his wicked way with her. <laughs> but when he went there, he found the cage empty and that the bird had flown. He cried aloud to the powers of evil that he might render his soul if he might but overtake the witch. He saddled, unsaddled his mare, unkenneled the hunting dogs, and set off in full cry across the moor with his drunken friends in pursuit. Bloody hell! <laughs> but when the pack finally caught up, he witnessed a terrifying scene. The hounds were whimpered in a cluster, hackles up, staring eyes, and there the moon shone down upon a clearing. And there lay the fair maid, where she had fallen down, dead, dead of fear and fatigue. But it was not the sight of the fair maid that troubled the men so, no, it was the sight of a great black beast, shaped like a hound. <laughs> but only much larger than every Lord Light has ever rested upon that was tearing out the throat of Sir Hugo Baskerville. I hereby warn all members of the Baskerville family never to cross the moor in those dark hours when the powers of evil is that it? Didn't you find that interesting? <laughs> to a collector of fairy tales. Well, perhaps something a little more recent will stir your thoughts then, Sherlock Holmes. The death of my friend, Sir Charles Baskerville. Ah, yes. Sir Charles, let me recall his obituary. One month ago, blah, blah, blah. Heart attack. Correct. Case closed. But what if I were to tell you that I have information that goes beyond the public domain? Case open. What, what kind of information? Dr. Watson, if you were to lie on the ground here. Mr. Holmes, could you dim the lights? <laughs> <laughs> Sir Charles' body was found by his butler, Barrymore. He sounds suspicious already! <laughs> he was found lying face down in the ground. Shit! <laughs> ripped into the earth. There was no sign of any physical injury, but the look on his face was so convulsed I can't swear to his identity. I returned to the scene at first light. The ground was still damp. It appeared Sir Charles tiptoed for some twenty yards before collapsing. Tiptoed? That was not the only thing I found. Away from the body, I found something else. Barrymore! No. <laughs> More footprints. Barrymore's! No. <laughs> These were the footprints of a gigantic hound. No. <laughs> yes. Tell me, Doctor, because I'm suddenly very interested, why not call me in before? Why wait a month? Because I fear, Mr. Holmes, we may be in the realm where even the most acute and experienced of detectives is truly helpless. The realm of the supernatural! I'd rather not be drawn. I quite understand. Watson, leave your sketch pad where it is. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, prior to the terrible event, several people had reported seeing a creature on the moor, and they all told a story exactly corresponding to the hellhound of the legend. Doctor, you tell me in one breath that you wish me to investigate the death of Sir Charles, but in the other that it's completely useless. Are you oxymoronic? Oh, completely moronic! <laughs> <laughs> I came here to ask for your advice on how to instruct Sir Henry Baskerville, who arrived at Waterloo Station today. Sir Henry Baskerville? The last in the line of the Baskervilles. He's a Canadian. So there's no other claimant to the Baskerville fortune? None whatsoever. And it is Sir Henry's wish to live in the home of his people. But consider this, that every Baskerville who goes there 
meets with an evil fate. Oh, it is such an impenetrable dilemma. What is your judgment, Mr. Holmes? A dilemma indeed, Doctor, but not an impenetrable one. I accept the case. I shall find Sir Henry and instruct him forthwith. Your part's now complete. Very finely played. We all enjoyed it very much, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Holmes. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Doctor. Holmes, how strange. What I can't seem to get out of my mind is this image of this old man just tiptoeing around the garden at night and then just dying. Oh, Watson, you see, the problem is it's so much stranger than that. <coughs> he wasn't tiptoeing. He was running. Running for his life. It's imperative that we find Sir Henry and instruct him before he goes to Baskerville Hall. <laughs> <laughs> What are we doing? This London steam room. Leave it to me, Watson. <laughs> Sir Henry Baskerville. Ah, uh, yes. Wow. <laughs> the name's Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. And my associate, Watson. Doctor Watson. Gentlemen, what a pleasure to meet you. And Doctor Mortimer said I should be expecting you. <laughs> Yeah, we were expecting a Canadian accent. Yeah, I can't do one. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to London, Sir Henry. Hey, thank you. Although I have to say, so far it's been a rather peculiar welcome. <laughs> Define peculiar. Oh, a joke as such. Uh, this note was waiting for me here when I arrived at the London <laughs> Steam. <laughs> <laughs> If you value your life, keep away from the moor. Sir so Henry, who knew you were going to be here? Hmm. I mean, no one could have known. Well, someone seems to be deeply interested in your movements. But how very dare they? <laughs> Excuse me. If I know very much mistaken, the letters were cut from yesterday's times. Page 11. The sender was most likely a woman. I'm very concerned for your safety. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Holmes, but I sound to be coming rather into the region of guesswork here. <laughs> See, rather into the region of a bad probability of choosing the most likely. <coughs> Sir Henry, I notice you're missing a shoe. Oh! Yes! <laughs> oh, you see, I left my shoes outside my hotel room for cleaning last night. And when I got up, only one was returned. The hotel hunted high and low, but to, to no avail. How odd! What do you say? Sir Henry, what do you know of the legend of the Hound of the Baskervilles? Hmm. <laughs> 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 More to the point, but it's advisable for you to go to Baskerville Hall. Well, on that my mind is made up. No spectral beast will keep me from going to the home of my people. That settles it then. You must go to the mall, but permit us, if you will, to accompany you. Gentlemen, it would be my pleasure to indulge you. Holmes, can we please get out of here now? <laughs> Sir Henry, we shall rendezvous on the morning train from Waterloo. Until then, remain highly vigilant. Goodbye. We must uh, leave in haste. <laughs> <laughs> Holmes, look! There's a suspicious looking man with a suspicious black <coughs> beard headed for that handsome cab! Come on, quickly, Watson. Driver, follow that cab. Watson, where's our man gone? Well, he couldn't keep up. He had the shoe missing, that towel. <laughs> <laughs> that man in the back of the cab ahead. Well, I don't know. He just drove off pretty far. Yeah, that should have bastard. If only Sir Henry hadn't delayed us. Who was he? Sir Henry was squirrely back in the morning. Mark Watson. No, the man that hit the cab with the beard. Oh, I don't know. A spy? Well, it appears that Sir Henry has been close to the shadow ever since he got to London. I've only got the number of that runaway cab. Clumsy as I may have been, Watson, you do not think I would have neglected to have got the number. Number 2704 is our man. Oh, you're incredible. 
Pardon? Could you swear to that man's face? Absolutely! I use any language you deem necessary! <laughs> Never mind. It's imperative that against all odds we somehow manage to find that cat. Okay! Are you the cabbie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, done, Watson. Now then, Carrie, tell us all about the fair at King and what's the London Steam Room at ten o'clock this morning. London Steam Room. Ten o'clock. Oh, uh, yeah. He said he was a detective and asked to say nothing about him to anyone. Now, listen here, Cabby. This is very serious business. And you're going to find yourself in some very sticky water if you try and hide anything from us. All right, I'm sorry, Gov. That's okay. There's probably no need to pull a gun on you. <laughs> now, blocking your inquiries. On reflection, it was a little bit over the top. <laughs> I would have done the same. I would have shot loads of people by now. <laughs> yeah. He told you he was a detective, did he? Did he mention his name? Mr Sherlock Holmes. Yes, what? Oh, that was his name, Gov. So that was you ahead the cab the whole time! And you were after me! Can't you see what's the thing to my name? We just toy us. Ah! Dash and burn! It's Watson! We've lost the cabin! Hang it all, we'll never find it again! You do have London, big London, it! Where did he say he was going after the London steam rooms? He asked me to take him to Waterloo Station. Yeah, but where was he going? Waterloo Station? <laughs> How would you describe this, Sherlock Holmes? Oh, so about six foot tall. He's got blonde hair. He looks about twelve years old. Oh right. Oh well, I've put him about forty years of age, dressed like top, and a big black beard, cut square at the end. I don't know, I can say much more than that. Well, perhaps. This! What is in your tongue? <laughs> well, I don't remember anymore. Watson, put your gun away and find the general public! Sorry, madam. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. That'll be all. Watson, back to Baker Street. This is a dark and dangerous business, Watson. The more I see of it, the less I like it. It's a puzzle, isn't it? A puzzle, yes. A big, intricate puzzle. I mean, we've got the corner pieces, but the main pieces are mi missing. I mean, the middle pieces with the main picture on. Where are the damn pieces of puzzle? What's the damn picture of? Not even a box with a picture on the lid to refer to. Pieces of puzzle everywhere. God, I hate puzzles! <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Holmes? I think I'm stretching the metaphor a little bit too far. Got <laughs> it. I wish for you to accompany Sir Henry to Baskerville Hall. Alone. Alone? Yes, without me, I'll be staying here on other business. You saying that I can solve this case without you? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's highly unlikely. <laughs> I, I, I don't understand. And in those few words, my friends, you have perfectly articulated both the beauty of our friendship and the genius of my plan. Now here. Take this. <laughs> <laughs> I wish for you to report facts to me in the fullest possible manner. Never relax your precautions. And remember, it's imperative to guard against everything. Very well, Holmes. Goodbye. <clears throat> Last call for Dharma. Last call for the mob. <laughs>
<laughs> Trees are coming. That'll be the ten post three. You can set your watch by that. You got a watch? No. <laughs> you? No. Prisoner escaped. Couldn't set your watch by that. <laughs> Wouldn't make sense. Hey, there's two men getting off together. Not often you see that round here. <laughs> no! <laughs> Do you want to take them? <laughs> Why? You're out. Thank you very much, Jeff. So are you. <laughs> Yo, you mean your cow? Oh, then bring it. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take him. <laughs> All right there, Bernard. I'll be away today then. I'll be in that bag. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Gentlemen. We come to the moon. <laughs> Having your throat cut. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Come back! <laughs> you think get to a stroke? Do you want to be nice to get to know the area? Not at all. Perfectly lovely afternoon. Shall we? Follow me. Phew, I'm exhausted. Oh, <laughs> me too. The rest why I'm not. <laughs> Dear Holmes, we've arrived. A little shepherdess skipping around tiny bits of fluffy cloud. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I think they might be sheep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, they're sheep. <laughs> oh, I can see there's a lot I've got to get used to around here. And a ticket was in my hat all along. Love, Watson. Kiss, kiss, kiss. <laughs> One kiss. <laughs> Shall we press on? Good idea. Cecile, Cecile. Get back. Get straight back to life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's this fierce looking woman. She's speculating at me and shouting at me. I'm so gibberish. Cecile, you must go away. You made a mistake. <laughs> it's very pleasant round here. There's a lovely green bean in, in the village. But you, you must go. For the sake of your life, you must leave this place now. Go, go, go. Wait, wait, man. Calm down. Tell me, oh, where do you live? Or oh, what is your name? Sir Henry, can you not tell when I'm warning us for your own good? Cecile, Cecile. Hush, my brother is coming. Not a word of what I've said to anybody. <laughs> A very dangerous combination, Sir Henry. Well, what do you mean? Well, when you've had as much experience as I have, there's not a lot you don't seem to notice. <laughs> <laughs> You're be sinking. Oh, yes, so I am. Oh, Sir Henry. So are you. Oh, no. <laughs> this is looking very good, is it? Quick, over here. It's going to be further footing over here. Not move if you value your life. Grandpa <laughs> Meyer, now one false step means death to man or beast. Here, let me help you. I'm the only man who can get you out of her life, so just follow my every move. <laughs> Lock 
Lucky gentlemen. <laughs> Only the other day I witnessed a horse being sucked <laughs> into the very depths of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> Chasing a cyclopodes. A what? It's a very rare butterfly. Very rare. <laughs> Seldom found on the moor. What? Seldom found on the moor? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Slash a Seldon! The knot in your murderer! Put away for life! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, him. He actually escaped earlier today. <laughs> My God! By the way, Sir Henry, M. Stapleton, local naturalist. Uh, how did you know my name? News of an arrival travels fast in this quiet, desolate place. You must be Sherlock Holmes. <coughs> no, I'm Dr. Watson. Oh. Dr. Mortimer said we were to expect the great detector himself. He was coming down to investigate. No, he's been detained up in London. I'm in charge down here. Tell me, Mr. Stapleton, what brings you to live in such a barren place as this? A queer place, is it not the more, but uh, never dull. You see, we had a school in Yorkshire. We? My sister and me. Oh, the extremely pretty girl we just met. Extremely <laughs> <laughs> pretty. You keep your hands off, are you? Sorry, I uh, get quite protective sometimes. <laughs> I assure you, I meant nothing by it. <laughs> Mrs. Stapleton, please carry on with your story. Well, there's not much to say, really. The fates were against us. A piece of food poisoning broke out. And all the boys died. <laughs> Would you like to come for dinner sometime? <laughs> oh, that sounds lovely. Dr. Uh, Watson, I have a large collection of Lepidoptera that may interest you. In particular, a speckled brown back. A speckled brown back, fighting moth. A unique <laughs> specimen. And now, gentlemen, I must be on my way. My sister <laughs> will be waiting for me. Fast will hold in that direction. But be careful. Night falls quickly upon the moor. Okay, I'm sure I'll reach there before then. <laughs> 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 Watson, do you have a torch? No, but I've, I've got a gun. <laughs> Is it also a torch? <laughs> no, it's just a gun. Damn. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Oh, something afoot? It's a stabbing feeling of my heart. I'm not surprised, Sir Henry. We must get out of the moor as quickly as possible. Oh, look. Flashing lights over there! I see it! It's coming from the direction of Baskerville Wall! Oh! It must be Barrymore, the butler, signalling to us! <laughs> Let's head for that then! Follow me! Sir <laughs> <laughs> Henry? Indeed? Welcome to Baskerville Hall. <laughs> Barrymore? Yes, sir. You seem surprised to see us. Were you not just signalling to us across the moor? Yes, sir. It was you I was signalling to. Yeah, what do you do with that tray of food out here? I thought you might be hungry, sir. And yes, but don't you think we'd like to come inside first, take our coats off, go to the toilet? Or are you in the habit of serving dinner in the middle of a driveway? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Just a customary way of welcoming people in these parts. <laughs> Very peculiar. Yes, it's all nonsense to me too, sir. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how us modern folk are. Bewildering. <laughs> By the way, sir, do you mind if I resign? Resign? <laughs> Barrymore, your family served mine for generations, have they not? Yes, sir, but you see... 
Sir Charles's generosity and his will gave us, my wife and I, means to retire. To me, off we thought. <laughs> and now, sirs, unless you insist on dining out here, I will show you into your rooms. Sir Henry, it's him. He's the murderer. Do you not notice that suspicious black beard? Yes, ridiculous sights. I'm being serious. Him and his wife bumped off your Uncle Charlie for the inheritance. It's just a hunch, but... Oh, come on! Oh, what about breakfast? I'm ravenous. Do you know any 
pincers? <laughs> What's the great pleasure, Shrink? Baron, what on earth are you playing at? Go and fetch your wife. Yes, sir. <laughs>
I managed to slip into my list of suspicious suspects, as he was just acting a little bit odd. However, he doesn't have a big black beard, so my chief suspect is still Barrymore. Barrymore? <laughs> Bit of a long shot, don't you think? Oh, a hermit! Hello! Hello, Watson. How do you know my name? Why don't I put that letter in the post box for you? <laughs> That's very kind of you, but I do not I'll take it myself. <laughs> but I live in the post box. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, just make sure it goes to Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Holmes shall read this letter sooner than you imagine. That's very kind of you. Dear Mr. Holmes, blah, blah, blah. Watson, you seem to have suspected everyone since you arrived on Dartmouth. Get out of here! Who the hell do you think you are? How do you know my name? Watson, it's me, Sherlock Holmes, operating undercover. Yeah, right, pull the other one. Pull the other one. I'll post it myself. Post it yourself, then, you idiot. Right, you're going straight on my list. Put me on your list, too, then. Six months from now, I'll see you. Cecile! Cecile! Sir Henry, what are you doing out here on the moor alone? You just had to see her again. <laughs> Come along, let's go back to Basketball Hall compare notes. <laughs> so we met a turnip. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I met a hermit. Number <laughs> <laughs> on my list. You know what, Watson? I've got complete faith in you. I dare say you'd be a, a match for the infamous Sherlock Holmes himself. Oh, no, really? Yes, really. And you know what else? I'm beginning to think of you as one of my closest friends. <laughs> Sir Henry, we thought you'd dine at the Stapletons tonight. Why so, Barrymore? The note. I left it with the doctor. Oh no! I clean forgot! It's not like you, Watson. <laughs> Dear Sir Henry, come to dinner tonight. Yours, the Stapletons. <laughs> Sir Henry. I forbid you to go out on the moor at this hour when the powers of evils are exalted! Let's stay in tonight and have a big slap up meal! <laughs> we thought we were going out too, sir, so we ate all the food. <laughs> <laughs> what? Again? Not even a sandwich? Not a sausage. <laughs> Maybe we could make our way to that dinner tonight. No, what am I saying? Let's stay in tonight and drink our way through this impasse! This is all very confusing. <coughs> the cat, the sobbing, the light, my missing shoes, my missing suit, <laughs> the lack of food! Exactly. <laughs> what are we going to do? Maybe there's a takeaway in the village. <laughs> what? I'm being serious now. My life is in danger. We need a plan. Think, man. So we suspect the barrel of something, but we don't know what it is. Correct. And we've got to find out what it is. And if they suspect we're trying to find out what it is, they won't do it. And if they won't do it, we won't catch them doing whatever it is we suspect them of doing. <coughs> Chew on that one! <laughs> <laughs> I understand what you're saying. No one else does. <laughs> <laughs> you're saying, let's pretend to go to bed before the Barrymores, to catch them doing whatever it is we suspect them of doing. Brilliant! There's no flight on you, Watson. Not at this time of the year, no. <laughs> Are you staying up, gentlemen? Uh, no, we're going straight to bed. I'll be Watson. Oh, it's so tired. <laughs> but you should stay up, Barrymore. No, I'm going to bed too, sir. Not before us! Get me! I think I will be. We brought something down here, but we want to get it for two minutes! Follow me! Stay close! Not that close! Keep it distance, man! Oh, we walked into the detection cold attack! <laughs> What's that? Stand still, all! Oh, shoot! Please don't shoot! <laughs> What's that name? Mrs. Barrymore? Strange to see the two of you walking around in the middle of the night. Hold your names. <laughs> <laughs> don't turn the tables on us, Mrs. Barrymore. 
We were here waiting for you. Yeah. And what are you doing with that candle? Give it here. What are you doing by that window? Give it here. <laughs> what are you doing by this window with this candle? Fritz, it was. She was signalling to someone out there on the moor. There's the reply. Tell us, Mrs. Barrymore, what is going on? Who is your confederate out there? No, Sir Henry, it was, it was all my doing, all mine. My little brother, he slashed his elder, the escaped convict. He started out there on the moor. The light is to tell him where food's ready, and the light out yonder is for him to tell us where to bring it. I knew it! You didn't know it? <laughs> well, I do now! <laughs> because she told you. <laughs> I've done the lesson. We are going to get that man! Follow me! No, Watson! I have a better idea. Follow me! <laughs> <laughs> to the moor! To the moor! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he wasn't. But when he was young, the devil entered into him. Nasty business. <laughs> and today, sir, he'd always been known as a little curly-haired slasher boy who often nursed and loved. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I've got to go now. Oh, sir, if only you knew. I was just a teenager. He was only about five or six. Someone's been tweeting during the interview. 
<laughs> so what? Just read it. Currently watching basketball at Oat House Theatre. My wife and I are enjoying this little production. Oh, that's nice. A bit patronising. <laughs> but the clown who's playing Mr. Sherlock Holmes <laughs> is dragging the pace like an asthmatic donkey. <laughs> Well, I can't. Use it. <laughs> Show yourself, uh... Robert K. Sixty-four. Oh, calm down, Ryan. It was just one tweet that's been retweeted. <laughs> How many times? Hundred and three. There always has to be one. Three. That's what it, the rest of us. So you know what? Since this has got such a popular little opinion between the audience, I've made a bit of an executive decision. We're going to do the first act again. <laughs> hey, you did us, Ryan. If you want to complain to anyone, complain to Robert K. Sixty-four. <laughs> we haven't got time. We all have bloody time. The place we're about to do it in. Right. This is going to hurt me a lot more than it's going to hurt you. So, uh, Luke. Make the announcement. Guys, get the furniture on. Now! <laughs> well, it looks like we're going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so we present for you, again, the first half of the Hound of the Baskervilles. Watson, I can safely assume that this walking stick. No time, Watson, we have a little case on our hands. <laughs> ah, my walking stick! <laughs> Forget about the flipping stick, tell us about the dog. Here now, the legend of the house! Oh. Is that it? No! What? Sir Charles's body was found in circumstances far more suspicious than his inquest suggested, and away from the body were the footprints of a gigantic hound! How can we assist you? By saving the last but the last main basketball. Ah, yes, Sir Henry. Oh. Somehow we managed to find that cabin. There he is! Cabin, <laughs> <laughs> tell us about the fair that came to launch the London steam room. He said his name was Sherlock Holmes, he had a big back beard, and he wants him to take the Waterloo Station. Where is he going? Waterloo Station. Thank you, Kelly, that'll be all. Watson, to the street. Where are all the pieces of puzzle gone? Watson, I will not be helping you to die. More. No, that's all I have to say. No! Getting off together. Oh, <laughs> 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 scary at all. Shall we walk to Bassmill Hall? <laughs> Follow me. You are knackered. Oh, me too. Little rest. Way off. Stapleton, 
local naturalist, <laughs> known owner of a speckled brown back fighting moth. Old boys died when we had a school in Yorkshire. Won't you come for dinner with me and my sister? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
to this high up there and the rest of the is a beast of the seals. He might still be alive! His uh, <laughs> head's all broken and unrecognizable. He's really dead. There still might be a chance! <laughs> oh, don't say that! Pull yourself together! Hey, what kind of doctor are you? The nephew murdered, all is lost. Now it would be near impossible to find a connection between the man and the beast that caused this massacre. You really believe that man controls this beast? I have no doubt, but there's one. Like a werewolf! You look like a werewolf, Watson. What are you talking about? It's not even a full moon. <laughs> <laughs> I fear Stapleton is behind it. Stapleton? How do you know? I deduced it. But why would you do such a thing? I don't know yet. How do you know it's him? I just do, Watson. But, don't question me. All you had to do was keep Sir Henry inside. That's all. (laughs) 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 Now look, it wasn't so easy. And he was pretty headstrong. Once. The minute that Dr. Mortimer walked into that room back in Baker Street, I knew I had to be here. Just leave me alone! It was imperative, my friend, that no one, not even you, suspected that the great Sherlock Holmes was keeping track of events. It was the only way I could take the villains for foot wrong. So I was just a decoy? No, Watson. You were my torch. Your letters were my torch out there in the park. You burnt them? <laughs> only after I read them. <laughs> Without them, I would have been lost. Really? Really lost. And cursed. <laughs> I just feel like nothing compared to you. You're not nothing, Watson. You're my torch. I love you, Sherlock! <laughs> I know. Oh. <laughs> hey, what should we do now? Arrest Stapleton? On what grounds? Killing people with his dog! With what evidence? See, that's the devilish cunning of it. Even if he had acted with human agents, he might have had a chance, but if we are to drag the big dog of the bastards into the light of day, it won't help us in putting a rope around the neck of its master. Because dogs can't give evidence! Exactly. <laughs> 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 I think it's a little bit too late to be caring for Sir Henry now, don't you? Why don't you put him on a board? For goodness sake, what are you getting absolutely hysterical? I think we should return to Baskerville Hall. Come back later with a saddle of horse and a tool to untangle Sir Henry. Nightmare, isn't it? Sir Henry dead, the slash is still loose again on the moor. Oh, Selden says hello, by the way. You spoke to him? Of course I did. No one else to talk to out there. Lovely chap, it turns out. That's the thing with a criminal mind, you see. It's paradoxical in an inverse mirror of my own. <coughs> Holmes! Holmes! Look! Watson, you're here. Barry Moore and I were just about to go out looking for you. No idea how we got slit up out there. Okay. Henry! You're here! Yes, it's my house. But you're alive! I thought you were dead! You're really here! Oh, it's so good to see you! It's so good to see you! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
how are you? What do you think? <laughs> Mr. Sherlock Holmes! Uh, oh, welcome to Baskerville Hall! What is going on? <laughs> I think it's quite obvious. <laughs> no! <laughs> that body out there on the moor wasn't Sir Henry at all, just as I thought. You didn't think that! <laughs> There's a, a stick on the moor. Yes. Right there. <laughs> Watson thought it was you. Me? Yes, but it isn't, is it? So that's good, isn't it? <laughs> Who is it? It can only be Slasher Seldon. But we're good riddance to him. Sir Henry, Watson wrote to me and told me he'd seen you stripped to your briefs. I'm intrigued. What are you insinuating? I just presume the clothes never surfaced. No, what of it? No reason, just settles a little matter in my mind. Mrs. Barrymore, she must have taken your clothes out of the moor to give to her brother Slasher Selden. And the hound picked up the scent because it's trained by the scent. Sir Henry, your shoe. The very shoe to admit it, up in London. <coughs> that must be the owner of the hound to be. Bravo, my hand! Bravo! <laughs> Uh, are you saying that the hound is real and trains to hunt me down? Oh, of course not. The very idea. Now, why don't you go and saddle a horse, fetch Selden off the moor. Watson will join you. But Watson just said... Henry, go. But Watson said the hound... go. Go! Sir <laughs> Henry. Yes, go! <laughs> you thought he was dead. You pretend he wasn't. And now you're saying he's perfectly all right. Watson, when Sir Henry walked into the room, I was as sound as you were. Never have I had to control my emotions, sir. The equipment snares things. It's imperative that Sir Henry suspects nothing on what. So I should just carry on with my twaddle then, shall I? <laughs> Watson. What? Your little bit of deduction back there. Yeah, twaddle you call this. It was one of the most insightful pieces of detection I've ever witnessed. You mean I was... I was right? Of course you were right, Watson. You're my torch. Together we shall hunt down our man. Right! I'll go up and slash the Selden alone! You stay with Sir Henry! You'll be safe with you! That won't be necessary. For tonight, the dangerous past. The hound won't be released until Sir Henry is thought to be crossing the moor alone. Nevertheless, you will still guard him with your life. Take this. What is it? It's a gun. The dog's up to the torch. <laughs> wow! <laughs> Thank you! Good luck, Watson. To the moor! That's my boy. <coughs> Oh, 
This is a Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is some, uh, the escaped convict. How did that happen? And the relief that you're alive. Well, there's Mr. Sherlock Holmes make of all this. As you know, he's in London. Is there no one he faintly suspects of anything? There's no one. <laughs> well then, gentlemen, I must be on my way. By the way, Sir Henry. It would be such a shame to lose you. We'll rearrange the dinner from the patient. Where you speak? Me, isn't it? <laughs> no, he's great. Really normal. Be <laughs> <laughs> consistent. Yeah. Say to why? I've got to be with him, Watson. She's basically. All I think about. I fear she may have crept into my soul. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's pretty great. Now, let's get Slash and Selda back to Basketball Hall. If I ever tell you the time I fell in love, it was a Tuesday morning, one hot summer's evening, and the birds were singing Clay the Loo backwards. <laughs> 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 Stapleton's our man, all right, Watson. Once we have a motive, we can call our man. Here's my plan. Wait! Can I not just have a bit of sausage? Don't <laughs> <laughs> no, forget about the sausage. Please! Just a bite of the eggs. Can't you see they're stuck to the plates, Watson? <laughs> <laughs> Up any dirt you can, and one sticks. Two, the hat. And three, anything else you can think of. I can't think of anything else. I'm just one and two there, leave three blank. And Sir Henry? <laughs> For him, the danger does not pass. The hat will not be released onto the wall until he is on the wall himself. Don't release him out onto the wall alone. As you know, Henry might not be able to do that. It's a little bit tricky. You know he's in love with Miss Stapleton. I thought as much. I saw them spooning out on the moor. <laughs> I'll talk to him. I'll meet you in the village. Remember, Watson. <laughs> Stapleton even suspects that we're onto him. We'll slip through our fingers like the moorland fog itself. <laughs> Stapleton is not Stapleton at all. 
Who is he? I don't know. <laughs> but Hostel in York died under the care of a man called Van der Lure. Van der Lure? Let's follow that lead. Small cow in a sack. <laughs> Bonsai bovine for the purchase. <laughs> Excuse me there. Sorry, was I not just talking to you over there? No, sir. Uh, that was my wife's husband. <laughs> <laughs> right, do you know of any reason why anyone, let's say state, has the intent on killing Sir Henry Baskerville? No, sir. Can't think of any reason. Right, run along. Where you are, sir. Come on, boy. Walkies. <laughs> what? Just had a telegram from the Royal Lepidopterous Society telling me the man called Vandeleur registered the only find the speckled brown back fighting moth. That is Stapleton! Stapleton is Vandeleur! And he registered the find with his wife. He's married! And what's more, I believe Miss Stapleton to be in fact his wife. Oh! He married his sister! <laughs> Pretending to your sister. Why? Well, think of Austin Bates, honey to the bear. There's a bear? <laughs> of the Baskervilles? <laughs> Why would Stapleton want to Charles and Sir Henry Baskerville dead? <laughs> Yes. He is snooker. <laughs> Who the hell are you? I said the answer yes. In the snooker room. <laughs> Seven points. Oh. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> Rare moths, false identities, wives pretend to be sisters. <laughs> We are stuck in an incestuous menagerie with its horrible dead ends. <laughs> Terry, where do you think you're going? Yes, I've got to get out of here. I've been incarcerated in this bloody house all day. I'm afraid it's just not possible to see her. Oh, I'll go to the back all day. I'm afraid we can't allow that at the minute, Sir Henry. Is the trouble not passed yet? Officially, there is no trouble. Not officially, however. <laughs> uh, why won't you tell me just what is getting on? Just trust me, Sir Henry. Now, why don't you go and have a bath or something? A bath? I've had three today already. We're getting quite sweaty again. Maybe a bath will do us all day. <laughs> Watson, in this case, it's driving me to despair. Here I am, the greatest detective of all time. Help us. What can I do? What, what can we do? Damn it, Snooker! Started it all, Sir Hugo Baskerville. And you just likened him to Stapleton. 
Look at it. What's it. What do you know about portraits in the scanner? Quite a lot, actually. Sir Henry bored me senseless the other night about it all. Who's this one? <laughs> That's Sir Charles Baskerville. And this one? Tell me all you know about this Roger. Uh, he left England many years ago to seek his fame and fortune in South America, had an illegitimate son with a Brazilian wench, but the child has never come to light. Until now, the child is our friend. <laughs> and he's after the inheritance! And he's bumping up every Baskerville along the way to get it! Well done, Watson. Now we have it. <coughs> Soon he'll be fluttering into our nest like one of his very own <coughs> spotlights. A pin, a cork, and a card. We can add him to the Baker Street collection. That sounds ominous! Time to pause sooner than I expected. The theatre of death the intent begins, Watson. And we have front row seats. <laughs> Now try to Tonight, I suggest you let him. Goodbye, you ridiculous buffoon. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> stupid Yankee clown. I'm a Canadian. <laughs> All right then, Moose Boy. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Get out. Beef <laughs> <laughs> <Fifth> cheeks. <laughs> Excellent insults, Watson. 
<laughs> now Sir Henry shall cross the moor alone. We must hurry. We can't afford to lose him. <laughs> Sir Henry's life depends on him coming this way before the fog comes his path. Holmes, we must get out of here now! We are in control of the universe, and a fierce battle between good and evil is about to ensue. Follow me, quick. Exactly. 
If his true state is behind all of this, then I will uh, pursue him to his end. It is true. Then I will pursue him to his end. <laughs> Gentlemen, I must go and secure Miss Stapleton's safety. Good luck. I'll see you back in basketball hall. <laughs> Sir Henry, let me explain how Stapleton is a basketball and wants you get the inheritance along the way. Sir Henry. Yes? Stapleton is a bad man! <laughs> and once you take the inheritance? No. I'm afraid so. <laughs> now we must get out of here! Stapleton! Where are you? Show yourself, you fiend! Stapleton! Stapleton, where are you? Stapleton! Come on, now, you coward! What? You just won't die, will you, Sir Henry? <laughs> the money really isn't wanted to you, Stapleton! Money? I didn't do this for the money. I did this for pride. For the pride of my father's. And their father. Don't be the fool, man! In this fog, no one can find a way through! Shit. <laughs> Stapleton! Stapleton! Here, we can help you! I don't need your help. Spread your wings, man! It won't drag you down! No. I go to my death, cursed in the very name of Boston. <laughs> Stapleton! Stapleton! Sir Henry! Impossible. And what are you left with? 
everything. Not quite, old chap. Nothing. <laughs> Close, but the answer is actually the truth. Ah, I see. Do you? Not entirely, no. <laughs> been working like dogs. <laughs> Good one, Holmes. <laughs> Hang on, let me go fetch my stick. I think it's Rover here. <laughs> Holmes, you're looking a bit rough. <laughs> I feel fine. No, no, Holmes, I'm, I'm joking. You look astounding. <laughs> I don't understand you. <laughs> Let me grab the Labrador. Hey, I've got another one for you, Holmes. <laughs> Astounding. 